Hello, my name is Matthew Randall, and in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to look at writing uh, Python for Maya. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Python to um, uh, relink the textures uh, in this scene. So it's a classic scenario. We've got a scene. Someone's put it on their, they, they've created it on their computer. They've used image-based textures, but the links to those image-based textures weren't created properly uh, when the scene was created, and those links are broken now. So all those image-based textures are in a single folder so what I what we want to do is is we're going to write a script that will basically find all the image based textures and and um, tell it and map the f map it to look for the file in a particular folder so I'm just going to demonstrate the tool if I click on here you can see the tools got like a, a, a like a GUI interface that we've created here and we simply go set texture folder uh, and that will allow us to find the folder. So we've put the, um, so the textures are actually in this textures folder here. So if I click on that and go set folder, okay. And then when I click relink textures, it will go through, find all those texture nodes, and then direct them all to uh, the folder that we selected, uh, relinking all our textures for us. So it's a very quick way to kind of fix things. Okay, so this tutorial is going to demonstrate not just how to do this, but it's talking about uh, we're going to use a class approach to create this. And the reason I like to use a class approach when I'm using Windows interfaces is because um, it allows me to use that script in a much more flexible way. Once that script is a class, I can use that as an external uh, Python script that I could call in as part of a wider pipeline. And, uh, I can kind of stick it on my shelf. It just allows me to use it in a more flexible way. And also by writing it as a class, if I want to, I could also write this script in an external Python editor if I wanted to. In this case, we're just going to use the internal Python editor that's here just to keep things simple. Um, um, uh, but we could write it in external Python editor as well. So we're going to use a class-based approach. Um, this will also show you how to kind of interrogate node, nodes in a scene, which I think is quite a useful thing. And it also will show you kind of basic parts of the GUI in terms of how to kind of create a button, how to create a text field, uh, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, 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 that, that, that someone can use um, to input um, uh, certain details uh, into your tool. Right? So let's get started right so we're going to use um before we do anything in python what we need to do is um we need to sorry if you haven't opened this up i'm going to just direct you towards this and i'm just going to go Control z to undo this so that we can use it to test later okay um so i'm going to go windows uh let's have a look um uh, so i'm going to go windows um general editors script editor so here's our script editor and what I want to do is just open up a new Python tab I've got quite a few open you won't see as many Python tabs as you have here so to create a new Python tab just simply click on the plus button tell it that you want Python and it'll create a new Python tab for us so the first thing you want to do is you uh, whenever you're doing anything in Python is you need to import all the Maya commands so um, uh, the uh, all the commands that are specific to Maya aren't part of the normal Python functionality. So we need to import that in. So we can just go import. Um, uh, we're going to go import Maya.cmds uh, uh, as uh, cmds. Okay. Um, so what we're doing is importing all the Maya commands. And then that means that I can refer to those Maya commands just as cmds. Uh, rather than always having to go maya.cmds. So this just shortens things for us, okay? Um, um, also, what you should be aware of is that um, we, we run the Python code inside of Maya. Um, what that effectively means is um, uh, we're using the Python interpreter that comes as part of the Maya installation. And that already has, is already linked up to this Maya uh, commands um, uh, library of code that's already linked up for us so we don't need to go uh, off to the web and import uh, and, and download any extra functionality for this okay so that's already kind of connected up okay so what we're going to do is we're going to create a class I'm just going to do some comments here just to kind of plan out what we're going to do so we're going to create a class okay and what we need to do is when we create a class a class basically acts as a template um, so on that template, we can create an object that has certain functionality and certain attributes or, 
uh, or properties, if you will. Uh, and what we mean by attributes or properties is is information, so, okay, or bits of data that are stored. So we have functionality and data that are stored, okay. Now the data is unique to every single instance of this class. So the class is a template. Every time I create a new instance of the class, okay, um, what we do is, we, is is it will create all these, uh, it will create these functions and and also containers for these pieces of data that we need to store, okay. So what that means is when we uh, when we do our class, what we're going to do is we're going to have a constructor function. So I'm going to call it constructor. Okay. So we're going to have a constructor. So as soon as we actually, so as soon as we actually, um, if I could spell constructor correctly, that would help. Here we go. Okay. Um, so as soon as we, whenever we create a new, um, uh, a new variable, which is uh, a copy of this class. We, what we what it, what it will do is it will call the constructor function to set up a new instance of this class based on this template. Okay, so every time we create a new copy of this class, the con this function is automatically called. What we want to do is create a function that is actually going to create our window. Okay, so I'm going to call uh, so we'll call it create window. So we're going to create a create window function. Okay, and I'm just going to call it constructor function because it is a constructor function. Inside that constructor function, we'll be defining some of the properties that we want for for this particular class as well. Okay, once we've done that, we've got our window. What we then need to do is just define some functions. So if we look at this window, if I just open it up here, we need some functions behind these buttons. So we've got a, um, a, a texture folder button okay function so we've got a function that's going to be ran every time we click the texture set texture folder button okay uh, and then we're going to have another function that's called every time we click the relink textures button so uh, relink textures uh, button okay um, and and also we're going to ha end up with a, an, an extra function uh, which I'll explain in a moment. Uh, basically, so when we click on this, when I click set folder, that will also be a, another function as well. So uh, that will be a set folder function. I'll call it. Okay. So this is kind of giving our kind of uh, and it's kind of a good approach to do when you're doing these sort of things um, this kind of gives us an idea of the the functionality that we now need to kind of build into uh, uh, our, our script okay so um, first of all then let's define our class okay so I'm gonna go class um, and uh, I just need to give it a name, so I'm going to call it. Um, often, what I'll do is I'll put my initial on the front of it just to avoid um, invading any other namespace. So I tend to go MR, uh, and I'll just go texture link. Okay, so it just it's just to avoid clashing with any other kind of namespace that might be um, might be out there. Okay, and 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 we're going to base this class. On a um, on an object, okay. So all that means is if we take a generic object within Maya, okay, um, that's going to serve as a template for this class, okay. And basically, what an object is is something that can contain functions and and properties, i.e., bits of data, okay. So that's um, us defining our class. And now what we want to do is put in this constructor function. Okay, I'm just going to tab this in, uh, and I'm going to go to to create a constructor function. What we want to do is go um, def underscore underscore in it underscore underscore. Okay, um, self. Okay. So what we're doing is basically we're saying this function. Uh, uh, is when we when this uh, is, is is ran whenever a new instance of this class is being initialized. Okay, so when so self is referring to the instance the the instance of this object. It's referring to itself. So it's saying when I'm being initialized, run this function. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I want to um, I need I need to give my window a unique ID. So I'm just going to go self. Okay, um, dot window, 
Um, again, I'm just going to call it. Um, uh, I'm just going to call it relink window. Uh, uh, let's have a look. And what I'm going to do is go. I want to give that window a title. Self dot title. I'm just going to call it texture relink uh, window. And I need to put that obviously in the quotes there because it is a literal string. Okay. So whenever we're dealing with a literal string, we want to put that in quotes. Um, self dot size. So this is just specifying the size of the window. Okay. And sorry, I should also know is when I'm going self dot, self dot, what I'm actually doing, uh, and I should be going self, not you can already see I'm doing some typos here. So when I'm going self dot, all that's doing is it's saying this these properties are un are unique to the inst to this instance of the class. Okay, so it's referring to itself. Okay, um, so imagine I've created an instance of a class, and self just means refer to the instance of the class. Okay, so self dot size. Uh, I'm going to go 600 by uh, 350. Okay, excellent. Okay. So that is our uh, constructor. Okay. And the last thing I want to do in this constructor is actually um, call the function that we're about to create. So I'm about to create a function called create window. Okay. So I'm just going to go uh, self dot create uh, window. OK, and just call that function. OK, and that's the function that we're about to write down here. OK. And again, I've written self incorrectly. Don't know why. OK, let's try again. OK, so. Next, so what we've done there is effectively define a set of properties. OK, and what that means is um, no matter what I'm doing, um, by using this class approach, it doesn't matter what functions I'm writing here, these properties are available to all of these functions. Okay, so these properties are available to all the functions uh, within this class. Okay, and um, so it's a really good way of being able to kind of pass global data between different parts of your, uh, ob uh, of your class. Um, so apologies there, my laptop is running out of batteries and I hadn't realized I, I hadn't actually put the power on. Okay, so what we're going to do is define this function. Uh, I'm going to go um, def uh, create window. Okay, so this is the function that we're going to call. And what we tend to do is when we're dealing with classes, I need to go self. OK, um, that's to say that this uh, this function belongs to uh, this class. OK, so that's important to do that. OK, uh, great. So if we go now, what we want to do is I need to do some commands before I go and open up a new window. What I need to do is I need to do some commands um, uh, to check if that window exists. Okay, so I'm just going to go if. So now we're going to start calling in the mayor commands. Okay, which we imported as CMDS. Okay, uh, so I'm going to go commands dot window. Um, and we're going to go self dot window. Okay, so and here we go if it exists equals true. So if the window exists, what we want to do is we want to close by exists. What we mean is, is the window already open? So if it's already open. What we want to do is close it and open a new version of it. The reason being is if I've updated my script in between uh, opening opening it, then obviously by closing it and opening up the new one, it's going to be opening up the most current version. OK, so it's always a good way of doing that. And it's a good way of managing your windows as well. So this is quite a common approach that you'll see. So I'll go delete. So now what we're going to do is going to go delete UI. OK, um, self dot window. So we're going to delete the window. 
uh, and we just say uh, yes it is a window okay uh, then what we want to do is we want to create a command um, to actually um, open up a new window so now that we know that if there is a window we've closed it we can now open up a new window so I'm gonna go self dot window okay and notice how whenever I'm referring to any of these variables that we've defined up here I go self dot whatever the variable is and obviously that's referring to these variables or these values that we defined uh, when we create created our class okay self dot window and uh, equals commands dot window dot self dot window so what we're saying here what we're saying here is um, uh, what we want to do is um, uh, store the window a, re a reference to the window that's created into this variable okay um, and we're going to call it what would the name that we're going to give it in terms of the system is the name that we've called it here. Okay, um, title equals uh, self dot title. So we're going to title the window with the title that we specified in our constructor, uh, and we are going to set the size, so the width and height of the window is going to be set to um, the size that we specified up here as well okay uh, let's have a look. okay so that will now create that's going to create a window now in order to actually see that window what we have to do is tell the system to show the UI so we're going to go um, uh, commands dot show window okay here we go so we're going to tell it to show that window now so um, what I always find is it's a good idea to kind of test run your code as you're doing things so that's what I'm going to do um, what I need to do is right at the bottom of this script I need to actually um, write a script that's outside of the class definition uh, it's just going to create a new instance of the class because then that will trigger this constructor which will then trigger this function and all the rest of the functionality that we want so um, I'm just going to go text uh, my text relink equals um, what do we call it up here MR texture relink okay so we're going to say it equals that okay and that should trigger everything to to start running okay so now uh, I'm going to close this although we shouldn't need to uh, in theory uh, but I'm going to close that anyway um, so I'm going to highlight this and in order to run our script what we're going to do is we're going to press the play button okay and we do have a syntax error uh, let me just see where that is okay so um, one of the things I don't really like about this uh, 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 scripting inside of Python is that the error checking isn't really that great uh, it doesn't give you very useful information so if I go control A and I press that it's just telling me there's a syntax error there's not a lot of information it's not even giving me a line code um, to look at um, so um, often I like to script in an, ex in a, in an external editor because it gives me a little bit more information uh, but anyway looking through this I found some uh, obvious errors that we put in so if I do this if command here what I didn't do was actually put a colon here so every time we do like a, an if statement or start up a function or uh, maybe we do a loop anytime we, every, every time we've got a block of code that we indent like this um, so where we start that block um, we put that colon in as well okay and so I missed that there the other thing as well um, so if I run this let's have a look okay uh, you can see that uh, it's just saying invalid flag so the one advantage of actually scripting within this console is it will give you much more meaningful errors about 
the actual commands within the Maya commands. So obviously an external editor isn't really going to know much about any syntax issues uh, with regards to um, using the uh, Maya commands, okay? Whereas this will be able to give you much more information on that. So it's a bit of a trade-off whether you use this or an external editor. So this is quite useful, this is fairly obvious. Um, I've, uh, uh, although, uh, it would, oh, we have got a line number as well, so that's great. Okay, so that's starting to be a bit more useful. So on line 819, I have spelt height wrong, okay? Uh, my spelling issues are coming to haunt me. Um, so now, if we do that and we press play, okay, we get a window. So now that we've got a window up, what we want to do is start populating that window with the um, UI elements that we need in order to, to control our functionality, which in this case is a couple of buttons and a text field. Okay, so I'm going to do that in the next tutorial.